dear all today i shall be discussing about definition eg pathology clinical features and variants of meniere's disease meniere's disease is defined as symptom triad of recurrent episodes of vertigo of sudden onset tinnitus hearing loss and oral fullness with endolymphatic high drops as the principal pathological feature the hearing loss in meniere's disease will be sensory neural hearing loss here the problem lies in the cochlea or the inner ear you can see here the basic problem lies in the scala media this is the scala media normal one and this is the scala media which is swollen this is high drops high drops means excessive accumulation of fluid the endolymph is usually produced by the strabascularis seen here okay they are the common site to produce the endolymph although other structures also produce the endolymph they increase production and decrease resorption of the endolymph leads to dilatation of the scala media that leads to membrane rupture okay this is called high drops endolymphatic high drops you can see the pathology of meniere's disease here this is a normal membranous labyrinth and this is high drops this is normal and this is swollen scala media which is also called as high drops excessive accumulation of fluid in the scala media coming to etiology of meniere's disease meniere's disease is idiopathic endolymphatic high drops so the conditions are idiopathic either increased production of the endolymph or decrease absorption of the endolymph through the endolymphatic sac and duct leads to high drops increased production of the endolymph may be due to allergy certain allergens when there is inflammation autoimmune conditions endocrine conditions like hypothyroidism hypopituitarism diabetes hyperlipoproteinemia they all can lead to increased production of endolymph by irritation increased sympathetic activity sodium and water retention viral infections usually mumps measles virus also may lead to production of the endolymph in excess amounts conditions that lead to decrease absorption of the endolymph are inner ear trauma due to fibrosis ischemia of the endolymphatic sac endolymphatic sac cannot contract okay and dilate obstruction of the endolymphatic sac or duct by either trauma or by idiopathic conditions and small size of the endolymphatic duct or sac that is usually congenital condition what is meniere syndrome as i have already told meniere disease means idiopathic endolymphatic high drops cause unknown but when the cause is known for endolymphatic high drops this is called as secondary endolymphatic high drops or meniere syndrome it clinically resembles meniere disease but there is a known causative factor they are as a sequela of chronic otitis media by infection or by inflammatory process kogan syndrome leukemia metastasis to the inner ear autosclerosis involvement of the inner ear or the cochlea post stapes surgery and syphilis they all can lead to secondary endolymphatic high drops what is the basic pathology of acute attack of meniere's disease the pathology behind meniere's disease is the endolymphatic high drops there is excess accumulation of the endolymph that is called as endolymphatic high drops especially in the scala media that can reach up to the semicircular canals the pathology behind acute symptoms are membrane rupture theory and increased sympathetic activity when there is endolymphatic high drops rupture of the membranous labyrinth occurs leading to potassium rich endolymph which is toxic to neural tissues getting mixed with the peridymph which leads to sustained depolarization and inactivation of the inner ear cells and neurons of the earth nerve bath in the peridymph that leads to acute symptoms that is vertigo and patient may get tinnitus and decrease hearing with the same phenomena increased sympathetic activity also leads to ischemia of the cochlear and the vestibular inner organs that leads to deafness and vertigo it is intermittent but as the progression of the disease goes on then the patient will have increased amount of hearing loss and vertigo Let's discuss about clinical features of Meniere's disease. Meniere's disease is common in age group of 30 to 60 years. Females are more affected than males. Unilateral condition is more common than bilateral condition. That means one ear is affected than the other. The first symptom to occur is vertigo, which is sudden onset, episodic, rotatory, 
lasting for 24 minutes to 24 hours associated with nausea, vomiting and diaphoresis with normal level of consciousness and orientation. This is very important. Suppose when the patient presents to us with sudden onset of vertigo, with loss of consciousness or decreased consciousness, we have to think of central cause, either heart or the brain. The vertigo is sometimes caused by loud and low frequency sound, also called as studio phenomena, because of the expansion of the vestibule. Deafness in Meniere's disease accompanies vertigo and improves after vertigo attack, which is fluctuating deafness. It is sensory in origin and it is progressive. Every time when the patient has symptoms, the hearing will be progressively lost. Sometimes patients may have intolerance to loud sound due to recruitment phenomena. Recruitment is defined as rapid increase in loudness in increasing frequencies. Patients may have distorted sound frequency, which is also called as diplopsis bin oralis disharmonica, some form of distortion of the sound in frequency in between two years. The next feature is tinnitus, which is a low pitched, roaring, non pulsatile intermittent or continuous. The patient usually has tinnitus when the patient has acute symptoms. The tinnitus increases during the vertigo attacks, otherwise patient may not be aware of the tinnitus. Addendum is the oral fullness, which is fluctuating and which is not agreeable by the swallowing process. This is due to swollen vestibule. Patient may have emotional upset. Patient may think that he or she has something in the brain that is leading to vertigo, so they may be anxious or depressed. American Academy of Otolaryngology and Neck Surgery has given certain diagnostic criteria for Meniere's disease in 1995. They are certain Meniere's disease means fixed Meniere's disease that is 100% sure, more than two episodes of vertigo, spontaneous type in more than 20 minutes duration that signifies certain Meniere's disease, along with audiometry or documented at least one occasion of hearing loss and tinnitus being present with other factors excluded. There is certain Meniere's disease. Then a probable Meniere's disease, one vertigo episode, more than 20 minutes duration, only one episode, and ordinary documented at least one occasion of hearing loss and presence of tinnitus. That signifies probable Meniere's disease. And in possible Meniere's disease, patient will have episodic vertigo, spontaneous, without documented hearing loss. And hearing loss may be a fluctuating or fixed sense of hearing loss with disequilibrium and without definite episode and tinnitus will be present with other causes excluded. These are the diagnostic criteria for Meniere's disease. There are certain variants of Meniere's disease and they are Lormois reverse Meniere's syndrome. In Meniere's disease, the symptom will be first vertigo, then tinnitus, then hearing loss. In Lormois reverse Meniere's syndrome, there will be deafness and tinnitus first, followed by vertigo and hearing improves after that. Next is Tumarkin's autolithic catastrophe or drop attack Meniere's disease. The patient falls without vertigo or loss of consciousness. There will be no central symptoms. Next is cochlear eye drops. As you know, there will be deafness and tinnitus only without vertigo. That is, the symptoms are only cochlear symptoms. It is a variant of Meniere's disease. And only vestibular eye drops when there will be only vertigo and that mimics benign paroxysmal position of vertigo. This is all regarding this video. Please subscribe my channel Dr. Krishna Kuriala for further videos in ear, nose, throat and thyroid. Thank you.